Let me tell you about the woman who fell from the Look, sky. Another one. Ah, you let I've one human in and no time. Times. I've heard enough of flying women. And it was very unusual. Hmm. Business or rest? Rest. And maybe some trading. Ah. Welcome. How can I help you? I'm looking for places steeped in magic. You remember any stories of sorcerers or magical places in the area? Not counting the fire-spitting bits from three years ago. Well, a sorcerer once lived in the wood beyond Vergen. You could look there. Maybe something's left. You might also speak to Cecil. Nobody knows Vergen's history as well as our older man. Let me tell you about that. I heard you saw something interesting. As clearly as I see you. Amazing! I look into the sky. But wait! You must buy a fellow a drink for such a story. Well, you shut it already. We can all recite this bullshit now. I'm a client and I'll say what I want. Pour me some Mahakam and Mead and no cheating. This noble wayfarer will pay. I'll pay. But if you bore me, I'll shove this meat up your ass. You're such a fine liquor. And my ass has no taste. <laughs> you won't regret it. Speak. Last week I was passing by the gullies. I like to take a hike from time to time. Get to the point. Hush. So I'm walking and suddenly there's a flash. A crack. I'm thinking, a storm's coming. But nearly a cloud in the sky. You hit the ground with your arse so hard you saw a flash. You were that drunk. Then I saw people lying in a gully as if they'd fallen from the sky. A man and a woman. The woman was so beautiful, I wished she'd fallen down on me. What did the woman look like? A redhead. Wearing a vest and high shoes with pert tits and a round arse. Just waiting to be grabbed and... Well, sounds just like your old lady. Shut your mouth! What happened then? Well, the woman was hurting, couldn't get up. The man clearly disliked her, because he didn't help her. He just stood there, menacing and talking. And then he left, and the redhead stayed. Noticed her tits, but didn't even try to help her, you sod. I was about to do exactly that when a troll came out of the gully. Ugly as shit after blueberries. Did it attack her? Not at all. I hid and saw everything. First he sniffed her, so I thought he'd eat her. But he didn't. He threw her over his shoulder like a sack and returned to the gullies. Is that all? Yes. Didn't waste your money, as you'll agree. How's business? You see, he travels the land, he's killing monsters. Looking for places near Vergen where magic would be strong. Somewhere a sorcerer might have stayed? Let me think. Verfran, a summoner of elementals, once lived in the wood beyond Vergen. They say his creatures excavated the entire southern wall. You could also search the nearby ruins and abandoned crypts. If boulders with arms and legs aren't magic, then I don't know what is. Cecil, do you know anyone who fought in the war three years ago? I did. 
Did you fight here at Vergen? Of course. Philippa claims you know a bit about the battle. That old kook insult, called king by some, thought that Adernians were bumpkins who'd ship bricks as soon as his troops crossed the river. Why did he attack Edern? According to Hensult, Upper Edern is the ancient legacy of the Kedwini crown and must be returned to the mother country. Brazen farter. That brazen farter had a point. If you read some history, you'll know that 300 years ago this land belonged to Kedwin. Lord of Crab! 700 years ago the elves reigned here, and a million years ago these lands were the domain of the worms. If things worked that way, every king could invade a neighboring land and claim his right to do so because an ancestor took a dump there. All right. Hensel wanted to conquer Upper Edern. What then? He rolled in, got hammered, and rolled out. Cecil, that doesn't help me much. It wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. If I try speaking of it, I'll see it all again. I don't want... The ghosts of the fallen fight in the mist. They turn into horrible creatures called Draugrs. Edernians, Kedweni, men, elves, and dwarves too. Bloody hell. No peace even after death. I want to help them, but I need to know more about the battle. Very well. Listen. A beautiful day that grew hot later. Very hot. When van der Grift attacked in the afternoon, he sent the Dun Banner at the fore. Many of our lads shit themselves at the mere sight of their standard. But we had a surprise of our own. Under the cover of night, we prepared fire pits. Our archers lit them up at the right moment. I still can't believe we managed to fool their scouts. If it wasn't for that ambush, we wouldn't be speaking today. They likely wouldn't be in Upper Edern at all. We decimated the Dun Banner, but that was only the beginning. Seltkirk was our commander. Everywhere he appeared, the Kedwenis gave ground. He wreaked havoc among them. Hearts rose at the mere sight of his armor. Then, Van de Grift himself entered the fray. Seltkirk met him in the middle of the field. In the end, Van de Grift killed Seltkirk. A terrible death that sent the Adernian ranks into disarray. I thought it was the end of us. Then the sky fell, as if the stars themselves had decided to avenge the death of a great knight. Fire covered the battlefield. Nobody sought the enemy. They were all looking for somewhere to flee. Yes, there were no more friends and enemies, only the living and the dead. They say it was the doing of a Kidwini sorceress who wanted revenge on Vandergrift. Could be true, as Henselt had her executed right after the battle. Did you see the duel between Seltkirk and Vandergrift? I stood half a furlong from them. Never seen a fight like it. Probably never will again. They'd already met once, at a jousting tournament in Ard Craig. Selkirk won there. He beat on the visitor so hard he broke his sword. Selkirk was a true knight, the last of his breed. Vandergrift was so pissed off after that tournament he hanged the smith who made his sword and ordered a special one from a sorcerer. I bet he cut down Selkirk with that new sword. Vandergrift is dead. What happened to his sword? Saskia's got it. Good thing, too. Only her hand can tame the hatred enchanted in that sword. After the battle, when the flames abated, the scavengers came. They stole everything. Imagine. Not a single keepsake or Selkirk in the whole of Edon. His brother babbles something about a gauntlet, but he's a lying dog. Remember anything from before the battle? As if it was yesterday. Hensel's troops crossed the Pontar the third day after the autumn equinox. Edon had good spies, so we were ready for them, and Selkirk lined up our troops along the hills. Our hearts rose at the sight of the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg and Gullet fluttering in the wind. Knights and armoured infantry side by side in our ranks. Even the peasants had their regiments. The dwarves were on the left flank. Over five thousand strong we were. Nobody caring about race or background. Like never before. Only King Demavend was missing, but he must have had more important business than defending his country. You saw the Kidwenis cross the river? From afar. I saw Vandergriff leading four thousand heavily armed men. Many a heart sank when we saw the elite bearheads or the armored banners from Ardkareg. The Dun Banner was in the middle, veterans of Brenna. 
As soon as he set foot on Adernian land, Vandegrift climbed the hill and surveyed the area, as if it was his fief. Son of a bitch was as sure of himself as ever. Upon spying him, <laughs> I remember the dwarves all dropped their trousers and showed him their asses. Then Selkirk stepped out in front of us, his white armour shone in the sun. We were afraid a kid Winnie Arbalist would shoot him, but they too stood as if frozen, and Selkirk just looked at them and bowed ever so slightly. You captured the Dunbanner standard? Hensel's choice troops, and not a one survived. The visitor sent them to their deaths, refused to give them reinforcements. He was a monster in human form. The men of the Dun were real swaggerers. Killed a lot of our lads, but for every Dunner, there were seven Adernians. They had no chance. Aye, we captured their standard. We buried what was left of them in the crypts beyond Vergen. Their standard lies with them. Worthy foes are to be respected, even in death. I'm going to need that standard. Thanks, Cecil, that was helpful. I think I know what I need to lift the curse now. Madam Eilhart claims you need four symbols. The standard symbolizes death. Vandegrift's sword stands for hatred. What about the other two? I have a feeling Philippa has a handle on the rest. Here's hoping you're right. Saskia needs help, Cecil. Philippa can produce an antidote, but she needs a magic artifact to do that. Would you like a fern and a dancing worm to go with it? Listen, I don't know about magic, but there is a place. As long as I can remember, it's been of interest to sorcerers. They say it's a very strong intersection. Look for magic there. Where exactly is there? Seek out the ruins in the forest beyond Bergen. There's a place of power there. You can't miss it. Why so glum? Saskia's a tough girl. She'll bounce back. Keep your head up. Thanks, Cecil. No, Witcher. I thank you. Save that lass, and you'll save my town. We killed most of the necrophages. Most? The passage to the lower level collapsed. They won't get out. In time, they'll die off and you can restart work. Thank you, Witcher. The whole of Vergen thanks you. Here's your coin. Shive, Skaggs, and Zigrim will get the same.
really funny. Damn, short ground to be physically trained.
chaff. What was that? You trying to be funny? Stop swaggering around town with that sword drawn, all right? You wanted to discuss something? I found one of the ingredients for Saskia's cure. Show me. Interesting. Getting warmer, but still not there. It's as if I'd sent you to get me the sun and you'd brought me a candle. We need something massive, an item of real power, Geralt. This is a dwarf's dream. Stolen and magically encased in this crystal, it would do if it were stronger. You know what this means? In addition to normal harpies, there are Solano in the area. Solano? Dream Snatchers. The only harpy species to develop something resembling intelligence. They magically bind dreams to mountain crystals. I heard they once inhabited this area. Solano live among regular harpies, but their lair should be full of stolen dreams. One of those would be powerful enough, I'm sure. You'd have to enter the harpy lair through the quarry. Unfortunately, the gate to the caves is locked and Cecil Burden won't open it. I asked him on another occasion. Stubborn as a mule, that one. But we must not relent. Saskia clings to life by a thread. Let me show you the desire contained in this particular dream. Don't be hasty to judge. Hmm. Yes, I can feel it. Whose dream is it? Cecil Burden's. In that case, I need to see the Alderman. Got a feeling he just might open the gate for me. I'm Cynthia, a mage in training. Philippa is my mentor. My condolences. No need for that. True, she's a demanding mistress, but she can also be charming. Besides, she's the best there is, Witcher. She has no equals. Excepting, perhaps, the old elven sorceresses. You should see her cast spells. Light and graceful she is. Not like that old tart de Tanzaville. You know Sheila? I've seen her cast spells. I've seen all the great sorceresses at work. Sheila's quite manly in her style. Precise, logical, exceptionally composed. But she lacks grace and suppleness. Is that your opinion? Or are you just repeating what Philippa says? We agree in our assessment. Triss Marigold, on the other hand, is talented. But she lacks determination, courage, and a certain cold willfulness that seems necessary. That's interesting. Kira Metz and Margarita Lo Antiel are both blasé, seemingly resigned. One's a hedonist and nymphomaniac, the other cares only about her school. They lost enthusiasm for magic long ago. Then there's a Francesca Finderbear. Nobody really knows what the old she-elf is capable of. But she's clearly very powerful. I take it Philippa has none of these flaws, but she must have some weakness. Ambition. Infinite, boundless, and burning like the Korath Desert. Just out of curiosity, how much does a magic course cost these days? <laughs> I'm certain you can't afford it, Witcher. Besides, you're too old. No matter. I have a few of my own tricks as it is. <laughs> you mean Witcher's signs? Hmm. Philippa, 
can conjure up the illusion of a garden full of flowers, fruit trees, and young elves of both sexes copulating merrily all the day. And the illusion is complete. The flowers have an aroma. The fruit and she-elves are juicy. Invite me over the next time she conjures up this garden. I'd gladly see it. Professional curiosity. Naturally. But I doubt Philip is in the mood for complicated illusions. She focuses all her efforts on Saskia. I need to get inside the Harpy Lair. No chance. I know all about the Harpies. They steal dreams, collect them. I found one, but it proved too weak for our purposes. I need a stronger one. So I'm asking you nicely. Open the damn gate. Listen, Witcher. I want Saskia to recover, I do. But don't ask me to turn this town into a circus just before we battle Hensalt. My grandfather locked that gate for a good reason. Imagine if we could all go in there to look at those dreams. Dwarves, peasants, their Scoia'tael, Adernian nobles even. All seeing the desires of others. Terrifying. It would be the end of Vergen. What's more, legend has it the oldest stolen dreams can become reality. And I don't want nightmares stalking Vergen's back alleyways come nightfall. Open it. I'll make it quick. Stop pissing me off! You're acting like a drunk suitor! No means no. You know, don't know if I should mention this, but the dream I found belongs to you. What are you talking about? It's an embarrassing affliction, I imagine. Hell, even something of a political liability in your case. Some might even call you a freak. You're the Alderman. An ages-old tradition is vested in you. On top of that, you now lead the preparations for Vergen's defense. You wouldn't dare. Imagine your ancestors carved in stone. Condemnation, not pride on their bearded faces. Who knows? Maybe you'd keep your office, but you'd be the talk of the town for ages. And your nephew? Poor kid. I'll open the gate. I promised Scalen's mother I'd be sober as a judge to the end of my days. And I aim to keep my word. I don't give a damn about ages-old traditions and piss on loose talk. But you're right. I cannot compromise Vergen's morale. You must bury this thing. The secret dies with you, never to be spoken aloud. Understand? I do. Thanks, Cecil. And good luck staying sober. Another one. You let one human in and in no time you've got a swarm. Like ants they are. I heard human women need only sit astride a man's pants. Lots going on around here. Aye. Got a virgin dragon slayer. Squirrels dazzled with her. Politicking peasants, witches and a witcher. The onlookers gawking at the whole thing. 
Hope things get back to normal soon. Oh. Damn! What's with everyone being so nice today? Fancy taking on a dwarf! Monsters for clean. His daughter was glistening in the eyes. Sorcerers mutated him when he was young. You're tough as my hackam and steel. The prize money is yours. I think I've heard of you. I can see that your arm's itching. No man can match a dwarf at arm wrestling, save maybe a witcher. Take your gold, that's well deserved. <sighs> Who's this, my failing eye spy? Geralt of Rivia visiting old Yarp and Zegrin. Getting anywhere with the new recruits? Like whores in a brothel. They're plowing away at full speed. Sarsky's army's full of men better at holding their pricks and a weapon. But Zoltan and I are helping them catch up. Most importantly, they don't lack spirit. They won't defeat Hensel's regulars with zeal alone. Ah, uh, we'll show you what an army facing either victory or death is capable of. For we've no other choice, Geralt. I've been trying to figure out what Philippa Eilhart's doing in all this mess. Same thing as always. Conspiring until she gets her pubes in a knot. I know you hate sorceresses, but try to put your animosity aside. Well, we hate them, that's a fact. But why do you think that is? It's not because of their secret knowledge of their nice tits. Their hearts are full of dumb guilt. Mark my words. You exaggerate. No, oh, maybe not all of them. The Isle Heart's the worst. Need I remind you how she peddled her ass to Dijkstra just to learn the plans of the Redanian Intelligence Service? Everyone in Vergen knows she's not into cock. I tell you this, it's her ilk that caused the ruckus on Thanid Island. Think she's any different here? I'm crap at talking, Geralt, but you do all right. So I'd appreciate, as soon as Saskia's better, slip a word in her ear to watch out for Philippa. Were you in Rivia when I got caught on that pitchfork? Was I? Fuck, Wolf, I saw you die! I didn't see the little bastard who took you for a haystack, but I swear it looked like you weren't going to make it. So I'm well glad you managed to lick your wounds. I don't know if it taught me anything. Come on, I had to. Not many have survived their own death. You haven't noticed that I'm pissing up wind again, fighting for a cause that isn't mine. No, I haven't. A free upper Adam is in the interests of any decent fellow. Did you fight at Brenna? Oh, fuck. I know you've got amnesia, but you could have remembered that. Ah, oh, it was a beautiful day. On one side, six and forty thousand black ones. On the other, us. The Nordlings together. The Redanians led by De Reuter on the left, the Temerian regiments in the middle, and us on the right, the Mahakam Volunteer Army, all dwarves. Even the likes of Kohor must have shit his britches at the sight of us. He hardly lacked courage as I heard it. All right, brave bastard, that's true. Prefer to die than run like a rat. I don't believe I've ever seen a bigger melee, except maybe three years ago here at Vergen. Would have managed that day too, even without the magic. That burning shit that fell through the sky. Why, even the Dun Banner knelt before us when we brought our battle axes down. Some say not one of the Dun Banner survived. Any truth to that? Biggerhorn nabbed the survivors as they fled south. The most men of the Banner lie in the catacombs, along with a standard. The Dun Banner. 
What the hell kind of name is that for a unit anyway? It's as if they couldn't get their fucking flag clean. Zoltan claims you can arm wrestle like no one else. He's right. Did he tell you I beat him? Omitted that bit somehow. Old fart. Want to wrestle me? I'm ready for your challenge always. So? Show me what you got. That's some training you received at Care Morhen. You're no wimp yourself. How are you, Sheldon? Better than at Brenner. Though we've quite a rumble ahead of us. But I promise you this. We'll kick Hensel's arse and send him scurrying back to Kedwin. Zoltan says your company are true arm wrestling masters. Unbeatable, last I recall. Is that so? Care to check if that's still true? Sounds good. Ready to take me on. Give me your best shot. Sure there's no dwarf and blood in your family? I'll tell you when I get my memory back. safe again. Any plans to do something with it? Of course. Soon as the battle's done, we'll resume digging. Shame to let those rich deposits go to waste. My uncle says they'll put Vergen right back in its feet. Zoltan's talking about a shared enterprise or some such. He's to manage operations with my uncle as general overseer. We just got to save the town first. Hey, Scalen. Wanna arm wrestle? I really like to wrestle, but, uh... You may have beaten Dopey and Sneezy, but don't expect me to be such a pushover. Show me what you're made of. All right. Want to take me on? Show me what you're made of. I believe I'd split a rock with my dick sooner than I'd beat you at arm wrestling. I guess that makes me the new champion of Vergen. No shame in losing to the White Wolf. Though there's one who could still be a match for you. Who? The mighty Numa. I wrestled him in Kovir. Couldn't move my arm for the next week. They say he don't play fair. But that's just losers talking. You ever wrestle him? Give him my regards. I will. Well, I'll be plowed by a ferret. Yeah, yeah. Witcher Geralt of Rivia. Ah, you're a witcher like any other. But those swords, things of beauty. Nothing special about them. Ah, you're mistaken. If you know how to make a silver blade today, fish eat me if I'm lying, and engraving runes is not exactly farting down a rain spout. I wouldn't mind a closer look at your swords. Care to browse through my wares?
I wouldn't mind a closer look at your swords. Care to browse through my wares? Did I hear you mention a job? Indeed. One very much in your line. I know a collector in Wengerberg. He pays well for all kinds of monster-related curios. Ericus Venom? Necker Hearts? Sounds doable. Harpy Feathers. Uh-huh. Why Feathers? I never asked. Got the order and that's that. Interested? What kind of coin are we talking about? Why don't we do a test? Bring me a bundle of fine feathers for which I'll pay you, and if we're both satisfied, we'll figure things out. He's gonna want more than a bundle? That'll mean a lot of traipsing around. A few more, yes. So? I'll keep my eyes open, but no promises. I've got more important things to deal with. Can there be? <laughs> 
damn you're ugly. Got your feathers. Wonderful! Excellent quality! Just what I needed! I'll pay for each and every one! If you're in need of coin, just bring me more! I suppose I've had to work harder for coin in the past. All right, I'll keep it in mind. Excellent! I await your return!
Yeah. <laughs> 